dismantling systemic oppression, strengthening local economies, fostering equity and inclusion, cultivating communities for social good. We are motivated to leave the world a more just and compassionate place than we found it. A lofty goal? Maybe. An unreachable goal? Absolutely not. This is Impact Out Loud, the podcast that empowers bold impact for good, powered by Prospera Partners. Your hosts, Vicky Pazabon, Eileen Everett, and Ray Miller, aren't pulling any punches. They are diving deep, unpacking the challenges facing the nonprofit and social sectors, what is and isn't working, and offering systems level solutions to address the truly transformational leadership that's needed for social enterprises to better their communities. This is the Impact Out Loud podcast. Now, here are your hosts. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Impact Out Loud, the Prospera Partners powered podcast. Say that five times fast. (laughs) I'm Vicki Pazabon. I am your host with my esteemed colleagues and dear friends, Ray Miller and Eileen Everett are here with me today. And uh, we have a lot to talk about. How are you, Ray? I'm doing great. I'm really excited. We're kicking this off. And yeah, just looking forward to getting into the conversation. Eileen, how are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm super excited for us to actually dive into this podcast. We've been talking about it for months, and I know we have so much ground to cover. And so we're going to try to pace ourselves because we don't have to cover all the things in our first pack podcast here. But um, I'm I'm excited to to start getting into it and seeing where the conversation will lead us. Yeah, I'm excited too. So why? What are we doing? Why are we here? Right. Um, why do a podcast and why do this now? Um, I was actually talking to somebody yesterday about podcasting and how it is kind of, it's a new way to get your message out there to start talking about the work that you do to talk about lots of different topics. I mean, we're all listening to podcasts now, right? But for us at Prospera Partners, we want to sort of peel back the curtain on what we do in terms of our consulting, our frameworks that we work through in our methodologies and talk about some of the work that we're doing in the systems change world, in the diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, belonging, all those things. Um, Access is a big one that we talk about all the time too. So that's why we're here. And uh, you want to talk more about the why, Ray? This is an important thing to you. You were pushing on me for months to start a podcast. (laughs) Yeah, I'd love to build on it. I think what comes up a lot is the clients who work with us or people who've been through our programs, you can tell it starts to really resonate or or they stick with us a little bit longer and you see kind of these learnings seep in, but that gap between the talk and the feel of our work. And I feel like that's what we're kind of aiming to navigate here of getting a little bit deeper and really peeling back the curtain in different ways. So you really get to understand us and how we work. And you said a lot of words too. And we know there's a lot of words out there and we're like, but what, what do all these words mean? And like, what does that look like in action? And I think that's something we circle around a lot is like really you know, how do we not just like say these words and how do we actually have some meaning, intention, value behind them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad you said value because that's an important piece of what we do and it's who, it's the backbone of our company work, right? As Prosper Partners, we do have shared values. Eileen, would you want to talk a little bit more about that and who, who we are as a company and maybe why you're here in our work Yeah, I really appreciate what you both shared. And and in particular, Ray, and and you both know how much I focus on, we are in a world that people use a lot of words. But really, I love how Ray framed it around what do those words mean? Or do we have shared definitions? And then what does that actually look like? And I think no better place to start for us in, in our work of really thinking about this idea of integrity and integrity of this, you know, Brene Brown frames it as integrity is living your values. And what does that mean for us in our work with each other and with clients and out in the greater world? 
So I do want to share a little bit about some of our shared values that that we've defined, but not just the words of these, but what do these actually mean to us? And how does it actually look in the world? And so I'm going to start with this idea of systems change. And systems change, it, it's it's all over the place right now. We hear about it like systemic change. And not every change is systems change. So I'm going to look to both of you to really open it up of like, what is systems change to each of us? And how is that different from just any other type of change? Why systems change? Starting off with a big one. I feel like systems change is really central to so much of our work and can encompass everything. And I think it also helps to like orient us beyond like the nitty gritty or those details where we get lost in the work, right? Actually, it's funny someone was like, oh, it's funny that people need a consultant. Like, don't they have resources? Can't they just figure it out on their own? And I was like, well, (laughs) you know, people get stuck in that day to day. And we really are good at, you know, zooming out to see like you operate within a system. What is that system? And that exists on, you know, all these scales, right? There's there's this greater system that we're all operating within. There's your organizational system and what that looks like. And then also how those things interact with each other. And I also always love to bring up that, you know, I have a background in urban planning and there's always this like actual physical context that we live within as well. And that's a system in itself. So I think it's very layered and complex, but I also think it can help root us, right? We talk about, right, like we want to be anti-racist. Like, what does that mean? It means like we're engaging in this system that's been, you know, set up to perpetuate racism and inequality and systems of oppression. So unless we're talking about systems change, we're not going to start moving the needle. Yeah, thanks, Ray. That was me laughing from the bottom of my gut. Like. Because when I first started doing deep systems change work, I didn't know that I was doing it. I didn't really understand what it was. I just knew that it something needed to change. Something needed to happen in order for things to change. And I was working, uh, I was an executive director of a nonprofit organization, and we were working with local food systems work, doing marketing essentially for farmers and chefs to connect them for how they can grow the local food economy. And bringing those two groups of people together to really talk about what they were doing was the systems change, right? To talk about what is the whole system of local food? What does it look like? How does it operate? How is it equitable across all of the value chain of everyone who puts into that system. I didn't know I was doing systems change. I just was asking all these questions and no one had ever said, let's get these people in the room together. So <laughs> that that systems change. I think about the systems that we're all living in and, and what are they? And that's been my background for a long time is coming from the the economic systems of all these ways that we operate in and food is a big part of that. So yeah, systems change is all of the things, all of the players, all of the inputs, all of the ways that we operate, as Ray said. And I was laughing because (laughs) people often don't think in that way. And why do you need a why do you need a consultant to help you figure out, you know, how to do all of that? And a lot of the work that we're doing is to make the system function and operate better for all of us to be in. And I think deeply connected to systems change and and really getting to the why of why we're doing things is, is really thinking about impact. And it's something that I know we talk a lot about with our clients is what is impact? What is the change that you actually want to see in the world? And, and how do we actually then use systems change to see and realize that impact short term, medium term, long term? And I think for us in in the work that we do, since we focus so much on all of these interconnected pieces of systems change, impact, justice, equity, inclusion, accessibility, all of these pieces, is impact is always something that's, I think, challenging for us to really describe to folks who haven't been with us and experienced the spaces that we hold. And we hear over and over again, I mean, I think back to a few weeks ago that we were supporting a retreat of nonprofit professionals. And in that space, we heard over and over again at the end of the day, like, 
I was seen, I was heard, I was valued, we went deep. And I've never experienced this before in my professional life. And it's a really challenging thing to describe to folks. And that's part of the reason that we're doing this podcast is to be able to provide an opportunity for people to get a feel for what we do and some of the spaces that we provide. So this idea of impact, do either of you have any thoughts around the word impact, what it means, what it looks like for us and our clients and our communities? Impact for me always goes back to community. I mean, those two words for me are so powerful and so just tied together. You have to, you have to care about community in order to have impact and you have to care about impact in order to really tend to and care for your community. And I love challenging what impact means, right? We already talked about system change. We talk about new ways of being, and we know that things like impact are often thought of as like metrics and numbers and the largest that it can be, or like something that's like really, really tangible, right? People want to be like, what is coming out of this? And we can have a guide post, we can have some intended goals, but I think impact can have such a scale to it. And it's something that we know is like always unfolding. And I think of, you know, what you say a lot, Vicky, of like the work works on you. So sometimes that impact isn't always like directly felt. It's something that's like long term that is evolving. And I think that ties into all types of ways that we work. But yeah, I just love challenging this the idea of impact, right? If we're talking about nonprofit sector, we know that like in that grant report, it's like, we really need you to have those like numbers up. But is increasing numbers always in alignment with what is, like you said, Vicky, best in service to community? Not necessarily. And it's like being really intentional about like what you think impact can be and yeah, I think we just like love to challenge definitions too and and think about it in new ways. Yeah, I think about um, the reporting side of impact. And I'm sure we'll have another conversation about this at some point down the road. But for me, it was about the quantifiable stories, right? It wasn't about the data. It was about how can I explain what the impact is, how something somebody was affected by what happened in the work that we were doing. That is impact, right? Outcomes are all those numbers. So can we talk about impact? Can we talk about how one organization did XYZ things and made things actually better instead of just serving X number of people in X number of months <laughs> via these number of things that they did? That's boring. And I really, I really love and appreciate that you both brought in this word communities, which just brings us to our next shared value to explore. And I think for me, communities is probably one of the most important things that gets lost in translation. Again, it's one of those words we hear it all over the place, communities, community centric. Um, how do we get to the meeting the needs of communities? But I feel like people use the word without really thinking about what does it mean to do authentic community engagement? And it's something I'm deeply passionate about, because if we're going to really address how centralized power is in our society, in organizations, um, and policymaking and all different things, we really have to rethink how we are engaging with and supporting communities. And, and nothing kind of gets me spiraled up more quickly than hearing terms like stakeholder groups and focus groups. Um, and I just always love to call just bullshit on those things and that terminology. Because so often what happens is you still get stuck in these antiquated power structures of having a small group of people who get together. Typically, it's like a board, maybe it's some staff members or people who know one another in an organization or even across organizations, and they get together and they have an idea and they wanna push that idea forward. And so frequently what ends up happening is somebody will say, well, what about communities? How does that align with what communities need? And too frequently the solution is to do a stakeholder or focus group, which ends up being people that they already know that are already connected. And often those things are used to just justify whatever idea already came up, was already come up with in the room, rather than taking a 
big step backwards and doing the thing that we love to say, which is really practicing listening. And I love how Ray always frames it as like witnessing one another. That idea of listening and witnessing each other in our society is missing in so many ways. And of course it is, because where have we seen it modeled well? So I know for me, that community piece is so valuable and important because it's how do we actually create spaces that are authentic and meaningful to those communities? How do we actually be clear of, are we part of that community? If we're not part of that community, how do we go through the process of building trust and relationships that are real and authentic before working with that those communities? And then how do we actually take a big step back and really practice that idea of listening and really trying to get to the needs of communities. That's really central to our community-centered strategic planning process, which really flips the script on what strategic planning normally is, which it doesn't really serve communities when you just have people sitting together who already know one another, just like saying, yes, that's a great idea. Let's do that. Is that really meeting the needs of people? And how do we actually really do things differently to be able to do that? So I'm sure you all, you know, I mean, you both know that like, this is something I'm super passionate about. And that I do think gets conflated all the time. And that I'm calling bullshit on all the time, especially around policymaking that we see. It's like, where were communities really engaged? How come nobody ever reached out to me? How come I never learned of this opportunity? Why aren't you asking me what I think? And I think that's true for most people in communities. Yeah, absolutely. How many times have you gotten a notification that there's a neighborhood meeting about whatever happening? And, you know, it's, it becomes a talking at the community. Here's what needs to happen. Here's what should be happening in your community. And then they bring a panel of experts to tell you even more why that thing should be happening for your community. But there's no dialogue. There's no discourse. There's no feedback unless you're at a, you know, one of those really fun neighborhood meetings where (laughs) people don't want anything in their communities to happen. So they just make sure everything stalls out. But, and that comes from a place of not listening, right? That community is not being listened to when that kind of process happens. But one of the reasons I was so adamant and fired up about how we create communities of practice in our work by bringing together folks from different sectors, different levels of experience, but with a commonality of some kind, like social entrepreneurs, for instance, or those who are starting social entrepreneur enterprises, bringing folks together in a space to really talk about how they do their work together, why they want to do this work. What is that work? And that is community creating community together, impacting their communities. They all may not be in the same city or neighborhood, but they are impacting their communities and they're doing it collectively. So, you know, the word community can have lots of definitions to it. Yeah. I feel like what was coming to mind for me was how a lot of people need that reminder. We're all in community. Like I even was thinking as Eileen was talking, like, if we think of that traditional stakeholder, are they thinking with a community mindset or is it personal interest? And I think that's, you know, part that needs to come in into those like, you know, community centered processes is also the people hosting that kind of being at a distance of recognizing they are a part of this community and that like back to systems change, having a systems change mindset brings you back into understanding that full impact of the work instead of being just, you know, tied down by maybe it's profits or maybe it's by some sort of position of power or who knows, like whatever, whatever is driving them to make the decisions they are, they're, they're kind of losing sight of that collective mentality, which we know is, you know, kind of an American thing, right? In the U S we're really good at our self interest and, you know, back to even thinking of urban planning, a lot of it is, been beyond our control, right? Things have become car centric and suburban and shut off. And we're, you know, sometimes going from box to box, right? Our home to our store, back to home or to our job. And and we're not really taking that time to recognize like we are a part of a larger community. So yeah. And to your point, Vicky too, right? There's so many layers to what that can even mean. I think we all are in community in our work. I love, you know, reminding of community practice is such a 
a valuable way to work with others instead of right that talking at that we see a lot. And we're a part of all types of communities, right? I'm Jewish, Vicky's an immigrant, Eileen's queer, like there's other community representation that's valuable to acknowledge and bring into our conversations all the time as well. And I also want to add in and just name the beauty of what happens with having all these different perspectives in spaces, like how much we then learn from one another and how much, and again, to bring it all the way back to systems change, then all of a sudden we might have new perspectives to inform really thinking about how we can approach our work. And then again, that impact we might have. And then also the impact that comes from actually holding those spaces, again, where people feel seen, valued, and heard in so many ways that often doesn't actually happen in our day to day. And just the impact of shifting that, that sense of belonging for people. Yeah, I'd love to build on that because I feel like that speaks to the value of our work a lot and something we hear all the time is we know we get siloed in our work, especially nonprofit sector. It's this very isolating feeling sometime of like, it's you and your 50 tasks a day and good luck. And, you know, feedback we get a lot is just a lot of gratitude for just the space and and back to that community of practice idea of like, oh, there's, there's other people in this work with me. There's other people who care like I care. And I'm not just alone in this. And again, just speaking to like the value, I think, of these spaces that we're trying to create is really that connection and knowing that you're not just navigating this alone all the time. I love that, Ray. And I think that's an excellent bridge to our final value of really thinking about innovation. And we're constantly innovating in our work, how we all work together as a team, how we work with our clients, how we do communities of practice. Every time we host a session, um, we know that we're going to learn something new that's going to inform how that's going to look different than moving forward. And I think for innovation and to, and to link it back to communities, I mean, even, even this thinking around creating, I mean, we've, we've tried it out in a variety of ways of like, when you're in this space, you actually can't promote your own organization or business. You know, like we do exercises around because that's like so counter to what we normally do. We show up and I'm like, well, here, I'm, I'm here to represent Prospera Partners. Let me tell you about who we are and what we do and the value that we bring. That's, that's how we are all programmed to show up in spaces. And when you remove that, it completely shifts the dynamic of a space. So innovation can take so many different forms. It can be as simple as this is an invitation to actually do something different that might feel uncomfortable, but that uncomfortableness is going to lead to a different experience that could be amazing for all of us. So I'm curious if either of you have thoughts about innovation. <laughs> I don't um, know why I asked, like, if you have thoughts, like, I know, what are well, your right. thoughts? Of course I have thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm sitting with the anti-networking model. <laughs> It's just so frustrating to show up in spaces where that is the expectation, right? Where you can't really be who you really are and you can't really talk about what you really need to talk about in the work that you do. So I am anti-networking, 100%. <laughs> and can we possibly find a different way around doing things, right? So that ties it back to me for to innovation and it's doing something differently, trying something differently. You can go back to the old way if the new thing doesn't work. That's okay too, because sometimes the old ways are okay. They just need tweaking or they need updating. And that's innovation to me. It's not like the shiny new thing that everyone puts all their resources and time and energy into. I feel very burned out on that conversation, especially in the social enterprise world where innovation, you know, everyone was trying to find something new. Everyone was trying to solve a problem. And maybe it's talking about the systems rather than trying to solve the problems. I love that. And what comes up for me is one of the tools we use a lot too of like multiple truths. It's something we lean on of understanding like there's multiple ways to look at one thing, like write the word innovation. I'm currently in the Bay Area. And if someone says the word innovation, I'm sure for a lot of folks, they jump to like startup tech mentality, right? Like that's the first thing they think of when they think of innovation. 
But I love in rooting it back to like the yes and and to what Vicky's saying of innovation doesn't always have to be like this bright, shiny object. It can actually be, you know, tweaking what you're already doing. And, you know, we'll get into client stuff as we build on this podcast together. But what comes to mind is even a strategic plan we were just working on. And the feedback was like, wait, there's no new stuff here. And I first I think that was confusing until they realized like, oh, this is good. Like we're, we're doing good work. We want to keep doing good work. We just want to be serving better, doing better in the work that we're doing. So that innovation can just be tweaking what you have in place instead of piling on when you might not even be able to meet those needs. And you, you've moved away from the work that you know is working for you as well. So and yeah, I just love the multiple truths. I feel like once we like dug into that, I feel like applies to so many things. And it's something I bring into conversations all the time now. And I think it just helps in these conversations as well, right? If people are like, wait, that's not innovation. Like, no, yes, it is. And this other thing can be true as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really love, Ray, how you two, like you, you, you really pushed this notion of innovation doesn't have to be this big thing. And it really can be different around what people think of for like techs and startups. Um, And you both really reflected that too, of like, it can be these small little changes sometimes, or just doing things better. So thank you for taking the time to kind of go through these four things of systems change, impact, um, innovation and communities. And just to again, bring it back to These are the kinds of things that like on a daily basis, we talk about, we keep reflecting on, we aim and strive to have shared understanding and shared definitions about these things. And those keep changing and evolving. They're not static because we are all committed to that ongoing learning and growth. We are all like, we all talk about it all the time of like, we are lifelong learners. So these things do shift and change as we understand and we learn more about the world. And it's really this idea of how do we not just have it rooted in words, but what does this actually look like in practice? And how do we challenge each other individually and collectively with our clients and partners to actually do things different? So thanks for taking the time to chat uh, chat about all these words. Thanks, Eileen. This is all really important stuff because I would say when I started Prospera Partners 10 years ago, it is not the same company that it is today. At its heart and soul, it certainly is. And the work has shifted and changed. And I think through innovation, through continuing to look at what are the things that I valued when I started this work, what did my clients value, that has led us to who we are as a company today. And it's really important for me that we continue to talk about our values. I mean, a lot of folks go through the exercise of, oh, I want my company or my nonprofit to really state its values. But are they constantly being reflected on? Are they integrated into your decision making process? Are they integrated into your operational plans? Right? So I just really am grateful that you wanted to bring these forward as you know, hey, let's talk about this right off the top. This is how we operate. So thanks for that. And All I, right. I want to well, add, yeah. can I add into that, Vicki? I really hope, you know, I, I think about even over the last few months, we've changed as a company. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of our ethos of Prospera Partners is going to be different a year from now, five years from now, because that's who we are. And that's the work that we support with our clients. And for us to keep leaning into that. And just to keep reinforcing that idea, because we do this with each other all the time that we lean into, are we being in our integrity right now? Let's stop. Let's slow down. Let's think about it and reflect and how that piece is so missing and so different. Even that has impact because it's, again, where have we even learned these things? They haven't been modeled for us. Where do you like go into a professional space and have people say like, whoa, like, let's really reflect, are we doing those things? And it's just, I think it's such a valuable thing that we do as a company for ourselves and for the clients that we serve. I just love to add on there because I feel like it comes back to like that word innovation. And I think that's how we as Prospera Partners embody that ourselves is like, we're willing to do differently. And I think that is 
part of what drives our work and where we see a lot of challenges, right? People are like, well, this is how we've done it. Like, and I know we said like, right, keep things the same. It, it's all right. Everything is case by case. There's no like blanket way to do anything. But I think for us, like innovations also like our ongoing willingness to try something else out, to do it different, to let go of something, to pick something up. It lets us kind of shape in the way that we need to, instead of being like steadfast and like, to Vicky's point, like, had she been like, okay, this is who we are 10 years ago and never changed, that wouldn't be very innovative. We would be maybe stuck in a lot of ways. And would we be making that impact or building community in the ways that we we hope to? Yeah. So I, what I was going to say earlier was that I um, I remember a few years ago, I, I, I don't know what had happened. I think I had relaunched something, some of the workshops or something that we were offering and someone made a comment to me about, oh, I just love how you're always reinventing yourself. And I thought, I'm not reinventing. Okay, um, I'm I'm just building on and creating more opportunities for the folks that we serve. But also, you know, we've uplifted our brand a number of times in order to make sure that that message is really strong about who we are and what we're doing. And I couldn't do that as a personal brand. My company was a personal brand. I was Vicky Pazabon for a long time because that's who people knew me as. And I was attached to it. And then I said, but wait a minute, I actually have a company name here. <laughs> so I'm not reinventing myself. I'm just bringing forward who we are, what we do in a different way. So that felt innovative to me. It didn't feel like reinventing. Any last thoughts on our company values, any the work that we do, the pillars that we stand by our values and integrity before we wrap. I hope that we left folks with this idea of, of how do you move past just that brief exercise that businesses, nonprofits do so frequently of just listing these, what are our shared values, mm -hmm. and really take this as an invitation to slow down and get into conversations with one another. Do we mean the same things? And then what do these things actually look like in practice? Yeah, and continue to reflect on them. And as I said, you know, make sure that they're integrated into conversations, decision making, all of the above. Yeah. Ray, any last thoughts? And making it more than right. words, right? <laughs> kind of what we said at the yeah. top, right? Like people use a lot of words, say a lot of words, state their values. And like, what does that mean? Does that connect with you? So yeah, getting beyond just saying the words to really understanding what that means for you, for your organization, et cetera. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for listening to Impact Out Loud. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Eileen. And uh, we hope to see you all next time. Thank you for listening to the Impact Out Loud podcast, the podcast that empowers bold impact for good, powered by Prospera Partners. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to Impact Out Loud wherever you get your podcasts and follow Prospera Partners on your favorite social media. If you are inspired to make community-based solutions and systems change, Prospera Partners offers workshops and programs that are open to all. For more information, visit prosperapartners.org. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, be well and do good. Mm -hmm.